going to begin uh, by giving us a little bit of background or more context to the I Am Somebody piece that hopefully all of you all have the chance to walk through and see in the other room. So that piece uh, is created by an artist, an American artist, by the name of Glenn Lydon. And uh, Glenn Lydon is best known for what is known as text-based paintings that draw from speeches and writings of different uh, writers, authors, and public figures. And as I was preparing for this evening, I came across a very interesting interview uh, in which Mr. Lydon did, in which he, he addressed why he started doing the text-based pieces. Initially, Mr. Lydon um, did abstract art. But early in his career, he soon realized that abstract art was, in his words, quote, not big enough for his message. In other words, what he wanted to say, he could not convey through the language of abstract art. And at the time, uh, Mr. Lydon, uh, all sources that I read um, really talk about how well read he is. He's always done a lot of reading. So he was reading works by individuals such as James Baldwin, Zora Neale Hurston, Walt Whitman, and others. And he wanted to convey the ideas and the messages that he was reading in those individuals' works through his artwork. And so the question became, how could he do that? And so it dawned on him that um, why not just quote verbatim phrases or parts of essays that he read that was written by these individuals. And so that's what he started to do. And so I guess in the late 80s, he started or began his series of text-based paintings. And the one, I Am Somebody, is, is a very famous one of his uh, paintings. And I Am Somebody is actually the name of a poem that was written by a gentleman by the name of Reverend William Holmes Borders, who was a civil rights activist and pastor in Atlanta. He wrote that poem. Later, in following years, Reverend Jesse Jackson, as he began his career as a civil rights activist, began to recite that phrase, I am somebody, and incorporate it into a lot of his speeches, and it became quite popular. So, in another interview, um, Mr. Ligon addresses the form that he uses for these pieces. The I am somebody piece as well as all, the, all his other text-based pieces, or, or many of them, um, are actually on door panels. He said that he liked the form of the door panels because it allowed him to take a phrase, or at least a sentence, and repetitively stencil it from top to bottom on the door frame, where it's legible at the beginning, but then goes down to the smudge or, or more blur effect at, at the bottom. And that's really where the focus of the work is. And so Mr. Lydon gives us some guidance uh, when, when we view these text-based paintings. And he says that if you know the, the text or are familiar with the text, uh, of uh, what's actually stenciled on, on the door panel, then that really does open up the piece and, and give it a richer experience. However, he goes on to say that even if you're not familiar with the text, that that's okay, that that's not a, a crucial element because he believes, and it's, I agree with this, that if someone walks into a museum and sees a piece, that it will have some type of impact it will have some type of meaning to them. And so these text-based paintings um, that Mr. Lydon has created are known uh, for having layered meanings and for meaning different things to different people. 
So I know that you all didn't have a chance to look at the piece very long, but I encourage you to continue to think about that throughout the evening, what the piece means to you. But more so, I encourage you to come back to the museum even after tonight and spend a little more time engaging with the piece and thinking about what the piece means to you. And so at this time, I'm going to turn the mic over to my fellow committee member, Demetria, who has a, a bit of a thought activity for us. Hello, everyone. My name is Demetria Patton. Are you all excited to be here? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So as Harold said, I'm a member of the African American Advisory Committee, and so Harold has talked a lot about doors. And what we want to do right now, I have a jar here, and there are index cards and some pencils. We want this to be a place of community and connection. So if there's anything in your life, a door that needs to be open, like connection that you need to be made, need to be made in the community, or you just want to find community in Chattanooga, we want you to grab a card and write down something that you need, and we want to be a place of just connecting you with the right people. So if you want one, please make sure that you raise your hand and I'll come by and I'll give you an index card and I have pencils. And we just want you to write down if there's a door that you need open in your life, if there's connection and community that you need, please write that down. So without further ado, I'm gonna turn over the mic to our spoken word artist. They're actually gonna perform a piece based off of the piece of art that you saw today. Greetings, black people, yes! <laughs> Y'all look amazing. I've been here. Yes. Hey, Marcus. Hey, Eric. Let's get it. All right. So we are going to perform a piece with y'all tonight. Meaning that with you, we are asking, inviting you to participate in this with us. Because art, all art is interactive, right? Yes. yes. All art requires you to engage it, otherwise, I don't know what it is, but it ain't art. Come closer if you need to. So yeah, come on in the room, yeah, yeah, outside the room. Step into the room. Gather, at the rug, gather. Get comfortable. At the rug. Get close. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, the piece that we all walked past, examined, looked at, it's on our minds that we're looking at this evening, is made up of the phrase, I am somebody. Yeah. And a lot of us know it from the Jesse Jackson speech. Yeah. Some folks in Chattanooga may even heard it live. I Eric did. is one of them. I did. Because I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> but tonight, we're going to really dig into that. Into that idea, into that phrase. To what it means when we say, I am somebody. What does it mean when you assert your own existence yeah. and the importance yeah. of your own existence. Yes. So we, Erica and I, yeah. are going to leave y'all in a chant of I am somebody. But we're going to slow it down. We're going to let it build. And as it's building, we want you to join us in that chant. And as it's building, as you are adding your voice to the chorus, I want you to think about your own I am statement. Who are you? And in that, when the spirit moves you, speak. speak it. Say, I am and who you are. You can sing it, you can hum it out, you can dance it out if you got room. <laughs> we want you to express yourself so that everyone here knows who you are. Are we ready, my people? Oh, yeah. Now, I said, are we ready? Are we ready? Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Because I. I, 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 Some, some, I, I am, am, 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 some, some, I, I am, am,
some. Some. By. By. I. I. Am. Am. Some. Some. By. By. I. I. Am. Some. By. I. Am. Poetry. By. I. Am. A mother. By. I. Am. Love. By. I. Am. Enough. By. I. Am. Life. By. I. Am. Desire. I. Am. Life. I. Am. I. Am. I. I. Am. Stories. I. I. Am. Body. Body. I. Am. Body. Body. Speak. Who are you? Tell me. Who are you? I am. You are. What? Amazing. You're beautiful. What are you, dear? I am. A mother. You are what? What you are. Speak into this space who you are. Speak into this space the complexity of your art. Speak into this place that you are alive. Speak into yourself who you are. I am life. I am love. I am divine. I have ordered steps. I am some body. I am body magic and gumbo. I am some body. I am that fly of a lion downstairs. I am some body's dream. Yes. I am the promise of my ancestors. Yes. Yes. I am ex expatriates from Haiti crossing oceans yes. to be here. Yes. I, I am, am some body. I am. I am uncontained. I am boundless. I am bold. I, I am some body. I am and some body, I am some body. Take a moment. I am some close your eyes for a second. Wherever you are, just close your eyes for a second. Body. Take a moment. Think about the day and who you truly are how that works within your life, how that's going to move you tomorrow, how that's going to move you the next day, the next week, the next month, the next year. We're in 2020, so it's like clear vision. It is perfect vision for movement. But it begins with who we are. Who are we? We're black. We're outrageous. We're ridiculously creative. We're melanated. We're unbelievably gifted. That's who we are. There's ever a question? Somebody better answer it. You heard? Yeah. Think on those things. Where you're standing. Quiet. You can. Speak one word into what you are. What are you manifesting? What are you moving toward? New job. New life. New love, Lord. What are you moving toward? What are you going toward? Speak it out loud. Anyone? 
you're welcome to. This space is free and sacred, and as long as I stand here, it's safe. Speak it. Yes, more. Yes, more. Yes. Speak it. Yes, come on. What are we? Overcomers. Yes, what else? Resilient. Yes, what else? Powerful. Yes, what else? We are strong. Yes, what else? Blessed. Blessed. Yes, what else? Valuable. Valuable. Yes, what else? Fearless. Fearless. Conquerors. Conquerors. What else? Free. Yes, who said free? You know what? Not out to tonight. Not out to tonight. What will we be? Remember. No, remember. Absolutely. We will step in tomorrow with what? Victory. Yes. And what else? Absolutely. Knowing who we are. So. I am somebody. Join me. Somebody. I am 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 somebody. This clap that you extend is not for us, it's for us. So clap it up. Louder, louder, louder. Louder, so when those pictures there, that went to the party who I am, so when those pictures that went to the party who I am supposed to be, can know that the power that I am is beyond Yeah, about that part. <laughs> I encourage you guys to come back and visit. Oh, I felt like I just preached. <laughs> I encourage you guys to come back and sit with that piece. When I saw it for the first time with Adara, it hit me in my throat chakra. It silenced me. Because I wasn't sure who I was being and had to reevaluate, regroup, recollect, get it together. And it speaks deeper than just words on a wall. The way that it's made, as Marcus made note, that it raises up, is to raise what was dead, yeah? It's to raise up those dead thoughts of who we thought we were, regroup, renew, push us toward a new moment. The rise up out of the dark. Absolutely. So I encourage you to come back. Sit with that piece, let it melt with you. But we're gonna drive, travel upstairs, yes? And this message is even more pertinent as we take the top of the stairs to find hope.
we have a brief discussion on this piece, they'll be singing again uh, a piece called Be Grateful. So I think that's a good segue. So this piece is by Whitfield Lavelle, who was born in 1959. The title of this piece is called Hope, commissioned in 1999. The identity of the woman in Whitfield Lavelle's piece of hope is unknown, but the figure represents the artist's ancestors. The ledge below holds mason jars containing objects of personal meaning to the artist. The objects include coins from 1968, the year that Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and Robert F. Kennedy were assassinated. It also contains a piece of fabric from Lavelle's great-grandmother's suitcase. The mason jars also contain red soil from a graveyard where his ancestors are buried. The mason jars also include hair from the artist and his relatives, it includes dried flowers and rock salt. So as we look at this image, I encourage all of us to think about what adds meaning to your own life, and when we all leave this space, what things would you leave in your own mason jars? Mm -hmm. So feel free to move closer to look at the, um, the portrait and to engage and ask questions. <laughs> so as you look at the piece, think about with your neighbor, what would you leave behind in a mason jar that has meaning to the next generation? <laughs> It's something fancy. Right, it's fancy. She's dressed up to something. Mm -hmm. What are we leaving behind that's fancy? As also as we think about the mason jars, if we were to lift those lids and these represent things that were important to Whitfield Lavelle, what jars are you leaving open? Who has opened who has opened space for you? Who has helped you to get into the space that you're here today? Who do you remember that's paved the way for you, whether or not you've met them or whether or not you've had an opportunity to thank them? Who has opened a door? Who has opened space for you? First grade teacher, Miss Lloyd, African American woman. I still remember her. Who has opened doors for you? My uncle, who I didn't know until I was 25, was Thurgood Marshall's best friend. Wow. And left the island of Antigua to become a civil rights attorney. Mm. Who else has opened a door for you? An opportunity. This is Cheryl Mackey. She introduced me to poetry, even though I did at first. Barbara Tuckson, my elementary school teacher. She always believed in my writing, and she encouraged me to try it <laughs> everything. Mm. Even flip on that too is what jars are we opening for others? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So if you're in a need, as um, was mentioned before on the, set, on the lower level, you need anything, whether that's networking, connections, whatever that need may be, please fill out that card and include your contact information so we can make sure that that need is met.
on this year in 2020, we are celebrating 35 years since the conception of our organization. And um, on April the 4th, on April the 4th, yes, that date is correct, Jayla. On April the 4th, we will be celebrating with a reunion concert um, that is free and open to the public and we're all are encouraged to come. It's on April the 4th. Everybody say April the 4th. April the 4th. 7 p.m. Everybody say 7, 7 p.m. 7 p.m. It's going to be at Olivet Nation Church. Is it Olivet Nation Church? Olivet Nation Church. And I want you all to be there, okay? Thank y'all so much. Thank you. 